Before we get started, a quick note. This is my personal list of favorite horror films of 2019. I'm not suggesting they're the best films of the year because that's kind of meaningless. Also, while arguments abound to, as to what qualifies as horror, I use the same definition that appears at the opening of every one of my videos as the benchmark. So unfortunately, One Cut of the Dead, for instance, which is one of my favorite films of the year and is relevant to the genre, is not included here. There are other examples, but I just wanted my intentions to be clear. Alexandra Aja's Nature on the Rampage thriller isn't the best film of the year about being trapped in a confined space with a big lizard, but it's energetic and tense enough to find a place on my best of 2019 list. It's not a perfect film, it plays a little too safe for my tastes, but it's a really good time. Ulair Kalam. Our first import on the list, Ulair Kalam starts out as an overly sentimental story of a deaf and mute adult orphan who inherits a palatial estate. But this isn't a little orphan Annie story. The entire final hour of the film is a relentless final girl chase through the property. Nay and Thera's performance is pretty remarkable and recalls Amy Steele's tenacity. It owes a lot to Mike Flanagan's Hush and Mario Bava's Bay of Blood. But damn if I didn't grin all the way through. Midsummer. This was my most anticipated film going into 2019, and one of the very last that I watched. I'm on record as saying that Ari Aster's previous film, Hereditary, is one of the most important horror films in the last 50 years. Given that, Midsummer was always probably going to disappoint me, so I held off seeing it for a very long time. When I did finally sit down to watch, I discovered a beautiful, elegant folk horror film that stops just short of being a masterpiece. For any other filmmaker, this would be a stunning achievement. But did I feel a little let down? Sure. But the movie is still required viewing for any horror fan. Villains. Dan Burke and Robert Olson's Villains is a deadpan horror comedy that has an almost Andy Kaufman-esque refusal to commit to any pratfalls. The audience is invited into the jokes in a way that feels both intimate and friendly. While it's essentially People Under the Stairs reinterpreted as a Heathers-esque satire, the main quartet of actors absolutely elevate this to one of the best films of this year. The Pool. Thailand's The Pool is really a 2018 film, but it only saw a North American release this year, so I'm including it on this list. Similar to Crawl, it involves a man and a woman trapped in a small space, in this case an empty swimming pool, with a voracious crocodile. In spite of that setup, the film is shockingly quiet and personal for most of its runtime, but its real secret weapon is the devilish sense of gallows humor that permeates every frame of this movie. Fiction 6. The sixth and reportedly final entry in Albert Metzi's genre-defining Turkish Jinn series is a legitimate horror epic. While there are plenty of comparisons to be made with this year's It Chapter 2, Section 6 is an infinitely better movie. An unbelievably dense barrage of horrific images and ideas pummel the viewer for its entire runtime. Not for the faint of heart, but then if you're watching this list, that really shouldn't apply. Parasite. Bong Joon-ho's weighty dark satire about class and privilege in modern Korea is justifiably being touted as a towering work. It's a fun, subversive, primal scream of a movie that doesn't let any of its characters off the hook for the role they play in this social tragedy. Not a horror movie, you say? I'm not sure there's a film on this list that's as much of a horror movie as this one. Godzilla. King of the Monsters. Mike Doherty's entry in Legendary Pictures Monsterverse is a near-perfect distillation of the spirit of the original Toho films. Not just the monsters, but also the scale and the heart of the series. The American media seems to think that Godzilla is a four-quadrant summer event movie, but it really isn't. This movie was a love letter addressed to every kid that grew up watching monster movies on a 19-inch black-and-white television set on a rainy Saturday afternoon. If you want more than that, you'll likely to be disappointed. And we can't be friends. Ready or not. Samara Weaving joins Bruce Campbell and Peter Cushing in the rare role of the heroic horror icon. Ready or not would have been a fun time with anyone in the lead role, but Weaving sets off a fuse that puts this film into a whole nother planet's orbit. A really inventive take on both the old dark house template and home invasion themes, this movie is an absolute celebration of horror at its most irreverent and cynical, and at the same time, most endearing. And, were it not for the lead in my favorite film of the year, Weaving's Grace would have easily been the performance of the year. The Lighthouse. 
Robert Eggers stunned the horror world with his folk horror masterpiece, The Witch. With just that film, he earned the status of a must-watch genre filmmaker. As a follow-up, The Lighthouse does not disappoint. Bleak, surreal, and brainy, Eggers has crafted an art house horror classic that can stand alongside David Lynch, Stanley Kubrick, and Nicholas Rogue. Game over. Can't be a surprise to anyone, right? I mean, I've been talking about this film relentlessly all year long. Ashwin Saravanan's Game Over is a powerhouse of genre innovation. Tapsi Panu's tour de force performance as Swapna is the best final girl ever portrayed on film, in my opinion. The final act is an unbelievably kinetic firestorm of great filmmaking. Ron Ethan Johan's score is the best the genre has seen in a generation. This is horror at its most emotional, intelligent, and crucially, euphoric. Already on my favorite films of all time list, Game Over deserves its place atop this year's best of list. If I can have one movie like this every year, just one, it will always be a great year at the movies. Let me know what you have on your list in the comments below and have a great new year.